Hi, my name is Elle McCann from Curious Themes Web Development Studio in Nashville, Tennessee. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to bulk import products into the back end of your Shopify store. So this is really helpful if you are editing a lot of products at once of your current inventory, or if you're adding a lot of new products in. So let's say I only have two products in here now, but let's say we had, you know, a couple hundred. So you had multiple pages of products. You can easily select all of the products, hit export up on the products page, and then go to, you can either export, export a certain page, all of the products, selected products, or you can search for different products to export. So you could search for a different collection, for example, and export all of those products um, and then export it into an Excel spreadsheet. So this would be really helpful, let's say, if you wanted to edit a lot of the types or tags for a product, you could easily go in and export your existing products and then edit them in Excel and then re-import them in. But for this tutorial, we are gonna actually be importing brand new products. So I'm gonna hit cancel. And to do this, you have to have a certain type of formatting to import your products. So the best way to go about this is to actually download the sample CSV file that they provide. So to get this file, you'll hit import and you'll click this download sample CSV template. So once you select that, it'll download it to your computer and you can ed open it with something like um, Microsoft Excel. So I actually have that already open. So we will go here. So this is the sample template that it has set up for you. That, so this is what you'll see whenever you download that. So these are the fields and this is their examples which is two through four. So I'm going to put in some information pretending like we are going to pull in new products. So let me pull over some information from another Excel document. So you can see in this Excel document, I have just typed out a product title, description, the type of product it is, the size that it is, the inventory and the price. So I'm gonna just copy these fields and then I'm gonna go over to the other Excel sheet and I'm going to paste them in. And this way it'll just be a little bit easier in terms of publishing. We can move them around how we want. So for the title field, so I'm gonna edit things down here and kind of go along with the category up here. So I'm gonna move these titles. I'm going to cut them out and I'm gonna put them in the title field. So you can see up here, I'm following these, the first column or the first row. So title is right there. So the handle, you can see in their example, the handle is what the product URL will display as on your site in the URL bar. So you can see whenever you click on it, it just has a lot of dashes in here. So you can just copy the titles and paste them over here. And we're gonna come up here to this bar though, and I'm gonna put a dash in between, and I'm gonna also lowercase everything. And I'm gonna do that for all three of them so that it's consistent and that it works correctly. So going through all of this, uh, when we do go to import it into Shopify, if you have an issue, it'll flag it there for you. So you'll be able to see, but if you follow the template as much as possible, uh, you will most likely have a lot less issues. Okay, so this description that I have here would be this body HTML. So this is the description that I have. So I'm going to copy that and I'm gonna paste it down here so that I'm matching this. So the vendor for this I didn't import this name. Um, if you wanted to do a vendor, you could put that there. If you didn't, you could just go without. So let's just make up a name. I'm gonna say that the vendor for this is Crystals Unlimited. And I'm gonna copy this and put it for all three. Okay, 
The product type is crystal, so I have that already in here. I'm gonna just copy that, paste it in. Okay. The tags, so we're in this column now, um, I, we're not going to be putting in any tags. So some of the fields you do need to import things for, but some you can go without, and tags is one of them. So I'm just going to go without tags for now. For published, you do need to have either true or false. So this is if you want it to be published on the site. So I want that to be true. So I'm going to copy that. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. So right now we have three products and three rows. However, for the option, uh, once we start getting into these fields, option would be things like your size or your color of the product. So this is where we'll actually have to break this product down into multiple lines. So you can see here in this example that it has the title and then it has small and medium for these two right here. So it's breaking the product size into two different rows. So for all three of these products, we have small, medium, and large. So I'm going to copy this row and I'm gonna say insert. Oh, I should have done it below it, not above it. So I'll hit insert. Uh, so since we have small, medium, and large, I'm gonna do that twice. And I'm gonna do that for all three of them. So this is gonna let us start to do the size. So for the option, so where it has title here, I'm gonna put size. And I'm gonna copy that for all of the rows. And then I'm gonna put the small, medium, and large in different areas here. So first we'll say small, medium, and large. Then I'm gonna just copy these and use it for all of them. Okay, and let's see, I also need to copy, so you can see in this example, they didn't have to duplicate the type or the vendor or the description for all of that because it is the same product. However, we do need to, to put in the different handles. So you can see that they have the same handle just copied multiple times. So we'll copy this first one and do the same for the others. So this is just gonna make sure that it imports correctly. Because otherwise, if you didn't put it there, it wouldn't really know which product to go to. So we have those set up now. Um, so now we are in, so we've gone through, I just have one option. However, if you had a second option, so let's say you had size and color, you would go in and then do the color options here. So for example, if you had, let's say the color is black and white, if you had you know, black color for the small but not the medium, you would go in and make different rows for the different products that you have of each color and size. So sometimes it gets a little bit tricky if you have a lot of product options. Uh, if you are finding that you have a lot of different product options, sometimes it's actually easier to do that in the back end of Shopify because that'll auto-generate a lot of those variants for you. Uh, which is what we're doing here is we're creating the different variants. So we've gone through here. So let's see, the next field, so we're not going to do any of the other options. So the next field is the variant skew. So this would be, so you can see in their example, they have example shirt S. So we could do a, a skew and this can be whatever you want it to be named as. So let's see. We'll copy this and put it over here and put small. And I'm just gonna do the same for medium. And large. I'm actually gonna copy these and go ahead and do that for that as well. So of course you can name your SKU whatever you want it to be. I'm just doing it as words for this example. However, you could do you know initials, 
um, and an actual product number. If you're drop shipping, it'll probably be whatever it is from the drop shipper just to sync up with their inventory. So this will really just kind of depend based on uh, your business, if you can kind of create your own or if it's already set in stone for you. Okay. So the next field is the variant grams. So I'm not gonna put in any product weight here, um, but you could put it in here if you already had your product weight established. Uh, next is variant inventory tracker. So this is if you want Shopify to manage the inventory or if you don't want any inventory tracked at all. So for this example, I'm going to have Shopify track the inventory. So I'm gonna just copy that and paste it down here. And then next, it's going to ask about the inventory quantity. So in my example, I just put ones all throughout. However, you know, if you had, let's say, five of the small, 10 of the medium, and 15 of the large, you could pull that in and do it however you want it to do. The variant inventory policy is whether someone can purchase the product if it's out of stock. So if this, if you've sold your only one of this version, are you going to let people still purchase it even though you don't have it in stock? Or are you going to show it as sold out? So for this example, I'm just gonna have it as deny to not allow them to purchase that. Next is the fulfillment service. So if you had a drop shipper that was doing it for you, that would be different. However, a lot of people's it is gonna be manual. Next is the variant price. So here we have you know, the different prices that I had put in before, but you can also put in different prices, of course, since we broke out the sizes. So small, medium, and large. We could say, you know, this one's 10, 15, and 20. And we'll put that as our sizes. And I'll just copy that. And we can also do, the next field is the compare at price. So if you wanted your product to be on sale, you could have that compare at price. So you could have, you know, it's $20, but originally it was 25. And so that'll show that it is on sale now, instead of the 20, now it's 25, or instead of the 25, now it's 20. So you can see how that is there. And let's see, variant requires shipping. This was gonna be true for a lot of people. If you do have a uh, digital product, that'll be false. However, that is true for a lot of people using Shopify. Next is if it's taxable or not. Uh, again, this is going to be true for a lot of people. Of course, you can set up your tax settings in Shopify in terms of which states and countries get taxed, um, but you want to make sure that you know your products are set up as true. If you have a wholesale product, then that would probably be a false for that, um, but that's going to be really depending on your inventory. So now that we've kind of put in all of these fields, there's additional fields that we'll scroll over for. But I'm going to go ahead and delete this just so we can get everything a little bit closer. Okay. Now, some of the other fields over here are not as necessary. So there's things in terms of your um, barcode, which you may not have, your image source. So you can actually go ahead and upload your images to Shopify and then put the link here. Um, I find that it's a little bit easier to actually import them in directly in Shopify to add the images uh, because here you'd have to go through the settings files area and upload them so that it, it still is connected to Shopify or if you were importing them from somewhere else, it's handy. But if you're importing it, kind of setting it up on your own in Excel and importing it into Shopify, it's not as beneficial to do that. I find it a lot easier to actually just add the images once you have the product set up. Uh, but if you did add an image, you could do an image alt tag. So this is for SEO settings. Um, and then the other fields here are in terms of if it's a gift card, and then you go through a lot of Google and SEO settings, which you don't have to have set up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and not fill out this information. Um, a lot of that will auto-populate based on um, the import whenever you add in your products with your description and everything. Um, and it's a lot easier to go in and actually edit that in Shopify. So before we go to import it, I'm going to delete these sample rows. 
so it doesn't cause confusion. Okay, and then I'm gonna save this out. Okay, and I've saved it out as a CSV file. And now I'm gonna go back into our Shopify backend. So you'll remember I had clicked on the um, import button here, which is how I got the CSV template file that we worked on. So I'm just going to choose the file from here. And here it is, the product template, and hit open. And if you are going in, let's say that you had done what I had previously showed of exporting your current products and um, editing them in terms of their tags, things like that, and then you're re-importing them, you will want to go ahead and hit this overwrite existing products that have the same handle because that'll make sure that it actually edits the, the products and doesn't just skip over them. Otherwise, it'll skip over them. So we are doing completely different products, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm just gonna hit upload file. So this will upload it based on how long or how many products you have. It'll depend on how long it takes. Um, since we only had three though, it goes kind of fast. So you can see here that it shows a preview of what it looks like. So we're importing three products with a total of nine SKUs, which was a small, medium, and large, um, and zero images, we chose not to do that and we're not gonna overwrite any existing products. So here it shows what it looks like. So we have our product title, our description, the type of the product, the vendor, the variant of small, medium, and large, the SKU number that we put in, weight, quantity, and then price. So all of these things that we have imported or put into the Excel spreadsheet are now showing up in there. If you do have an issue, um, you'll see a big red area or it'll show that they couldn't do a certain amount of products. So you'll wanna go back in and, and fix that before you try and re-upload that. So let's go ahead and hit start import. Okay, and again, that's gonna really vary on the time based of, on how many products that you're importing. So we just have the three, so you can see now that we have it all set up here. So we'll actually go into one of them. We'll just click here. And again, we can go in just like you would with any other product, and now you can edit it however you want. So you can go in, since we didn't add images, and you can add the images here. You could add additional tags if you wanted to here, or change any of the, the variants or inventory price, all of those things. The Google SEO settings that we didn't edit uh, before, it was auto-populated in here based on our product name and our handle and the description that we put in. However, if you want to edit those, you can just hit this edit website SEO and edit all of that in there now. So that is how you will import products into the back end of Shopify. So that's going to drastically save you a lot of time if you're adding in a lot of new products or again, if you're exporting your current products to make edits to a lot of them instead of being able to use just the product editor in Shopify. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and subscribe to get more weekly videos about Shopify.